Hello and welcome to This Week in Property. I'm your host Richard Swan and in today's show we have a touch of the exotic, so we have. On one side we have a beautiful young lady from Slovakia. Yes, a background of Slovakia, so there's a nice little exotic twist and we're going to be talking about UK property. And secondly, rather than just the humdrum, boring property stuff with bricks and cement and concrete and everything else, we're actually going to be talking ecological today as well because she is our very own eco warrior i can tell you that i already know our guest today because she's been through Paul McFadden's Property Protégé training, so that's how I know her, and I know a lot of the projects that she's involved with, and they uh, lovingly call her her very own eco-warrior. I sometimes call her Greta for Greta Thunberg, so forgive me if I start to get her name wrong during it, because her proper name is Anna, Anna Pazdorova. Welcome, Anna, welcome to the show. Thank you, Richard, for having me. Yeah. It's great to have you, and this is a special day, because it's your birthday as well. This is the first time we have ever had someone on their birthday in Inside this week in property. Yeah, that's my big birthday present number one. Yeah, and it's uh, yeah, I'm very appreciated. It's great to have you. We've got a wee treat for you, Brad. Can you bring it in? Look at this. Look at this, Anna. We're bringing a special cake in for you. We've never done this before. Sometimes we get it at events and stuff, but uh, we've never. <laughs> we've never. Don't worry, we're not going to start singing. <laughs> there you go. And blow out your candle. Blow out your candle. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. Brilliant stuff. Thank there you. we go. You can just set that to the side. So let's get chatting. We've got a lot of stuff to chat about. Lovely wearing green because that, that fits with the theme and uh, make you all eco-friendly or eco-warrior. So tell me this. What is the backstory? Because I've, I've told the guests that Slovakia is in there. But here you are in the UK. You're doing a lot of stuff here in the UK. What's the background to everything? How did you find yourself getting involved here? How did you come across? Have you been back and forth, etc.? What's the story behind it? So my story is um, the maybe typical for a small child living in a small little village in High Tatra Mountains in the middle of Europe <laughs> and just wanting more and uh, never be afraid of dreaming. Love it. And uh, yeah, I, I was always uh, somehow connected to mm -hmm. the nature and uh, natural buildings. Right. It uh, start, so my background is, uh, I, I uh, was living uh, in classic communist block of flats, right. and, but my parents had an eco wooden house. So they had totally se different, totally separate from the, the rest of the, the village or the, the community, yes. yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, it Fantastic. was Fantastic. And uh, I always was amazed, like, uh, how I felt in the eco house with uh, natural insulation made of even moss so it was a oh, wow. proper, proper in, like eco house and uh, then i felt the difference when i came to school and it was a proper a proper uh, communist building and i never understood how why mm. but life went on yeah and uh, some of the, the, the kind of when you say a communist building you you think oh, oh gray and dark and quite depressing and so is that what you saw around you big it, big clunky buildings yeah exactly like right. intimidating yeah intimidating yes yeah and it was done by poor post i only found out later on that wow. uh, by neuroscience to induce fear in people but I will tell you later right. about that. Yeah. Excellent. But uh, like I know, I I went to I was always interested in uh, design, psychology, or business. Right. But when it came to choice, um, just my parents told me you won't do anything with psychology or design in this small little village. Choose the business. <laughs> Choose the <So>, business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, so I went to um, business academy. After that, to uh, university which was also uh, not not uh, easy to get because it was uh, 300 kilometers from uh, from us yeah wow. so even when i first went for the exams i had to travel early morning and wake up at three o'clock and oh find goodness. the two buses so it was always it it was always the uh, not typical for maybe what uh, english people here thinks like yeah. you go to university and wake up and go <laughs> you're fine so, yeah <laughs> so uh, yeah i I went to university, studied right. uh, finance, banking, investment, right. and uh, st yeah, decided I'm going to England. 
Right. Yeah, just, just this is where I'm going. Was yeah. there any particular reason? You know, particular reason was um, yeah to to learn English better, to be more competitive, right. and also to save some money for first properties. Ah, and fantastic! Yeah, because in uh, Eastern Europe, people um, are very connected to to first property. You know, right. everybody wants to have their own house. Is that right? Is that a big thing? Yes. Is it so right? that's why, and I knew I had no chance to get it uh, back in uh, in Slovakia on, or Central Europe. So uh -huh. I I just came here and uh, got my first job. Tremendous. And uh, yeah, but I realized I needed to do a lot of exams. Mm. So uh, yeah, I ended up in. Um, I was always involved in finance and mm. procurement, but always in engineering and technical sectors. Right. So uh, that gave me very good understanding of the drawings, technical requirements, mm -hmm. and uh, even though I always wanted to do the finance. From one day to the other, I ended up in uh, technical procurement and right. international procurement. Oh my goodness. And what was really exciting for me, it was I learned how to not to get intimidated by various nature of by various projects. Basically, mm. one project was about the energy. Another project was about the steel. Right. Another project was about the transport. So I had to quickly learn how to jump on any topic. Yeah, just which, changing hats yes, all the time. Yeah, wow, that's fantastic. Quickly. So, um, and that's, it's really helpful now in property because it's, I took it at the beginning just as, as another project here. Yeah. So life went on and basically I continued and uh, I got uh, higher and higher in the, in the ladder, job yeah, ladder. Yeah, moving and up the corporate yeah, and ladder. I always uh -huh. wanted my own business, but, um, I just somehow it was convenient, and I was always thinking, yeah, it's uh, is it really like the right time to start business now? Maybe times change and so right. on. Since I was a small little child, and <laughs> I, and yeah, maybe maybe it's good as it is. But uh, in between, like um, we became landlords mm -hmm. as well. So uh, I started that first stage of property and changes, all, but I was always in uh, in technical procurement basically. Ah, I see. And uh, as aside of that, um, um, I had small little port portfolio. It started the port yes. How did you find life as a landlord at that time? Were you just trying to to find your way, just trying to learn the game almost? It was. I I found it exciting. Did you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. First one was very emotional. You right. take everything personally. Oh, totally. Yeah, and uh, it's absolutely like your baby. You know, you you <laughs> take care of every room. You know, every picture. You spend a lot of time. Right. But you know now. You know, as opposed to now, you just yeah another project. It's just <laughs> another guess. one, just another yeah. one, yeah. So and it went smoothly for you. No big, you know, tenant problems or property pro. Oh, the roof fell in and all the boilers broke. Or was it just nice and smooth for you? It's never nice and smooth. It's never nice. You know? And smooth. <laughs> <laughs> we know that, don't yeah. we? We know the good and the bad of the property world. Yeah, but I somehow, <laughs> you know, took it as it is because I was prepared for it. Good, yes. good. So you had that I mindset. Knew, mm -hmm, uh -huh. I knew this can happen and mm -hmm. I basically just try to fix it and not dwell on that negatives too, too yes, long. Yes, mm yes, -hmm. I love it. And during that, the, the career, the corporate world, etc., moving about different areas, you were telling me earlier that that's where this journey started. This is where the eco thing started. You, can, you almost accidentally started to learn more and more of the technical side of the eco stuff as well. Is that, is that how that built up for you? Um, eco, how, did, how did that world open for you? Mm -hmm. So, um, I, um, we were landlords till 2014. Right. Yeah, but uh, it was, we never had any pro plans with that. It's just like side income. Right, and, love it. And uh, then I had, I had the uh, accident on electric bike. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and uh, I just knew it's a wake up call and I need to do something. Mm. And uh, in between, um, uh, before 2014, uh, I moved back to Europe, uh, right. yeah, worked internationally again, right. and uh, then just I was headhunted back here, but I also had a strong feeling I need to come here because right. that I didn't finish anything, <laughs> yeah, and that was so strong. Then after that, I started a small charity, right. yeah, and I will tell you later if there is a time, yes, and uh, I thought it was charity. my purpose, really, that charity, and I was starting to involve more and more, right. uh, but then I had the accident suddenly on electric bike right. and uh, 
I, um, I, I just thought, okay, so that charity is probably not, I need to do something. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what. So right. uh, it was like a mix of everything. Uh -huh. And uh, so I took the coaching challenge um, from Germany. And uh, it was actually a small little village, and my friend is coach in Frankfurt. Ah, so, no way! Yeah, it's, it's Whoa, such, a, such a strange. Oh, that's yeah. spooky! Yes, yeah, so basically, <laughs> I asked her, she was doing the challenge for international career and women. So I just thought, I will take 25 days to find your inner purpose. It was straight after that accident, I had broken ribs. Oh, my and, goodness. And uh, yeah, I recovered very quickly. It's no, Good. it's just, I, I took more of like. Uh, uh, of it like mental challenge to uh -huh. and the uh, wake up call to examine myself yeah you know but I recovered I? quickly i didn't bother about that because i'm quick healer yeah, uh, probably. I, yeah I, I will survive but <laughs> you know i am more, more more was thinking what should i do yeah yeah where's my future yes so um I took the challenge and on the 20th day, I was still, everybody already knew I'm going to start this business, I'm going to do the fitness, this. And right. I was like, I was always alternating between um, health and fitness mm -hmm. and property. Ah, and I didn't okay. know. Yeah, but on the 20th day, I decided it's going to be going to be property uh -huh. because I realized that it was coming from the place of love and passion right. rather than place of fear. Right. You know, always uh, I love fitness. I love, but I when I went very, very l back and deep, mm -hmm. it was because of fear of lose my health. This field of it gotcha. was always fear, and right. it was don't be, I needed to go very deep, yeah. and I realized uh, by property it's coming. It's coming from true place of love. There right. is no, no so it's fear. on a light side rather than yes. a dark side. Yes, yeah. it's got excitement and, and fun and absolutely yeah. okay. because I, worry, I was very passionate about that. I even started like own brand of this e, uh, paleo bars, you know, healthy oh bars. Really? Yeah, I, I was like very very passionate about it. Yeah, but I still thought something this was holding me back and then when I went very deep I realized yes property I can help so many people yeah and also I can use all my sourcing experience I mm. can use my yeah even experience from the um, uh, energy project I was doing mm. at work and a lot so I just thought this is definite and I this have never it. doubt anymore yeah. since that because I know it's amazing how it's all drifted towards mm -hmm. that isn't it because mm -hmm. you know property in the UK is it's sitting there and there's a part of you that thinks I want to travel there I want to go to the UK because I want to be better at English and everything else and, and business and finance you've got the business and finance training as well that's going to help you in property and investing you've got your parents house with the eco you know home etc that's driving you there and you, you felt that difference in the different buildings so that goes there you've got your friend from the same village who ends up being a coach in Germany and that crosses your path at the exact time that you've had this accident on the, I mean, it's incredible. It's all merged together, just pushing you along, nudging you along. And then your whole interest in health and fitness and, you know, the mindset, everything about it. It's, it's amazing how it's been driving towards that thing. You know, come on, Anna, go this way, go this way. It's fascinating, absolutely fascinating. And the eco stuff, were you starting to learn more and more of that through your, just your work, your day job, if you like? Is that where the science was coming in? Yeah, apart from that eco experience from my uh, village, where is the mm -hmm. there there are one two streets with eco housing. Is that are, right? Yeah, they are wooden. They are made of uh, yeah uh, locks, and mm -hmm. they've been there more than a century. That's really? why I'm so passionate that wow. you know this can last yeah. a lot. Yeah, and uh, so and that it was the first experience and second experience. A uh, professional experience was I was involved accidentally <laughs> in uh, CO2 re reductions initiatives right. and energy in initiatives of engineering companies. <laughs> Straight after I came uh, from Slovakia, uh, someone left and basically they assigned a job title to me. As, <laughs> give, so give as that a part, to Anna. Yeah, it was a part <laughs> of my job, but basically I was uh, energy team uh, team leader and champion for the for the plant. And I was like, what, what is <laughs> What it? have I done? <laughs> yes. And I was fresh from Europe. So it was like, I had to study what is it. And uh, yeah, and then, then I realized it's about CO2 reduction and CO2 targets. And right. you know, this international agreements about CO2 buy, sell. Yes, offsetting each other. Uh -huh, yes, uh -huh. yes. So uh, basically I had to lead a team 
to to basically to uh, s- to be in line with mm-hmm. the targets and uh, we were doing really great and we were overperforming ah, long term great which, which was good and i got into contact with so many exciting projects yeah which i had no idea about before <laughs> you know even terminology for me it was it was new yeah. basically even when someone told you know some word i had to you know it wasn't that straightforward you know yeah, every oh, step of the journey yeah yeah so it was good learning experience and uh yeah i i got through you know facilities um machinery and uh various like lighting it was yeah yeah we had a lot of consultations with the external consultants about this a lot of training so, uh-huh. it, so you, you're seeing all of the areas mm-hmm. involved the materials the construction the lighting insulation science everything about it that's fantastic you're getting a real big picture of it all mm-hmm. and i love how you just went for it you just, just accidentally the role came up and well okay I might as well go and learn and then you wanted to learn the language better you wanted to learn the science better and just bit by bit you've just kept following these doors every time mm-hmm. they open that's fantastic it's just the nature of business I was in because yeah. it was always engineering and uh, basically it's transferable skills you know mm-hmm. when, it, when you learn how to jump from one project and, and when I had to do multiple projects and with multiple different nature of the yeah. project Basically, it's you. You lead a team, and also uh, choose the right stakeholders yeah. to be there. And yes. then uh, if there is, you need to build a trust that you can trust them. Then yeah. and that Fantastic. you have stakeholders with right knowledge and experience in background, which is now absolutely brilliant for the property projects. Yeah, because, exactly. Mm, yeah, it's just second nature to mm, you. Oh, I know, I know how to handle this as a project. I know Absolutely. how to keep on top of it. Yeah. You're a clever cookie. You're a very clever cookie and a jet setter as well, just all over the world. Now, on the science, on the CO2 stuff, I want to share some stuff with the, the viewers and the listeners just now because those folks watching, you can see some of these materials. It's beautiful. I keep touching that. It's, it's amazing. It just drags you yeah, towards it. We'll, it smells we'll as talk well. It smells fantastic. Yeah. yeah, it really does. But here's, here's let me drop some of the science on you folks because I think, you know, if you say to people, uh, I, let's be more... Let's be more ecologically friendly. Let's be more green. Everybody nods their head. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And instead of this material, let's lose use uh, natural stuff. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But see, when you actually see some of the stats on it, it, it really starts to drive at home how it's also a very clever choice. Because I've, I've just shared some of this stuff with the listeners just now. So the carbon benefits. So using wood, using this kind of stuff, rather than the other standard materials, let's call it and the kind of benefits from it. So as we know, everybody knows this, trees. The trees themselves absorb CO2 as they grow, right? Everybody knows that. But let's dig into some of the numbers. Every cubic metre of wood used to substitute in place of other materials will displace, on average, 1.1 tonnes of CO2, carbon dioxide. Added to that, there's 0.9 tonnes of CO2 stored within it. That means that for every cubic metre of wood will save two tonnes of CO2. I mean, that's impressive. You know, straight away when you think of the numbers, like, wow, really? Because I think you need to mix that. In the heart, we know it's better natural. Let's be more green. We all know that. But I think up here, we need to drive it home as well. It's a clever choice. Because when we go on, this is just another post that you've uh, kindly shared on your LinkedIn. People, remember when it's safe to do so, click into the show notes connect with Anna, follow all her stuff, and you'll get to see these details as well. So another example, thermal performance in woods. Wood itself, five times better than concrete, 10 times better than brick. And here's the one that really blew me away when it comes to the thermal performance of wood. 350 times better than steel. I mean, it's it's remarkable stuff. And then when you start to put in the fact that, you know, energy, you know, trees, what does it take, as you point out in one of your, your posts, your articles? Well, basically, it's sunlight and water. That's what it needs, and it's done. Whereas something like steel, it needs 24 times more energy to produce it. So when you start to weigh that up, it's like, wait a minute. Why are we wasting all our time and our energy and stuff on these these other materials, these other, other substances? And uh, I think that the kind of obvious ones when it comes to wood and what have you, well, it's renewable. This can keep going. We can start it over and over and over again. And it also, quite frankly, 
looks and feels better as well, doesn't it? It's it's a remarkable product. And do you enjoy do you enjoy seeing it come together? You know, building some of the homes that you do. Because uh, what we'll do just now, folks who are watching this just now, we'll drop in some of the images just now. You'll get to see uh, some of the amazing homes and the garden offices, for example, that Anna's team put together. There's some beautiful, beautiful stuff. Uh, so you can watch that while we're chatting here. So do, do you enjoy that? Do you enjoy the process of seeing it come together, a beautiful wooden building and how it actually physically looks and feels? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. it's. Uh, I um, we started when I when I start first journey was really to find the right wood, mm. you know, and that really comes to again my sourcing experience, which was right. very handy. That's true. All the procurement stuff, mm -hmm. yeah, that you've learned in mm -hmm. another area. Now you're using that skill mm -hmm. because I've seen you. You've been jet setting to places like Estonia and all sorts of places. Are these the areas where you're finding most of the wooden supplies at the moment? Is there, there are certain hot spots for you? Yeah, there are. Um, um, yeah, I, I come from Slovakia and I was so, uh, I originally when I didn't study a lot before, I always wanted to bring something unique from my country, basically. Ah, right. And uh, if I, now I'm bringing knowledge and, uh, and uh, but material wise, I, uh, when I, um, when I considered pros and cons, uh, it wouldn't be wise choice. So right. I humbly went back and yes, thought, okay, this is not going to work right. completely. Like I'm not <laughs> going to bring exactly the wood as well because, uh, but it's only from customer experience mm. reasons because I want to bring our customers the best out of the world. Mm. And I know Slovakia is not best in the wood. Right. Woodworking is brilliant. There is a lot of a lot of knowledge and uh, companies there. So uh, we can cross link that and we cooperate with some right. companies. But as to the wood quality, we need to go further uh, towards Russia and right. towards to east because if wood grows in uh, more colder conditions, the more resilient and durable is. Ah, really? Yeah. Okay. So that's why we are using only premium quality Nordic wood. Right. Right. either from Baltic countries or Nordic countries. Ah. So, uh, yeah, or, or um, yeah, further down to east. Right. It, and they really can last. You you were mentioning some of the homes, you know, more than a century. Is, it, is that right? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's that's why I'm so passionate. I, I'm not uh, selling some China dropshipping, you know, and buildings <laughs> through containers. Yeah, because I, you know, I, I went, uh, yeah, two years ago, I was like on holiday in my small little village. I was passing up with my daughter just just trolling around the village and uh, was showing her this is the uh, the house where my grandparents lived and then I realized it's quite old and yeah. uh, it was open so we just knocked in and it was my cousin renovating that ah. and he's like 25 and house was built in 1886 and there is a wow. still construction beam so I realized you know when you take care of it nicely, mm. you build it with nice and uh, nice and uh, exactly the construction how it is supposed to be yeah. with right knowledge. It yeah. can last for centuries. Fantastic. That's why I'm so passionate that this is not something which I'm selling. I'm trialing. Yes, Basically, that's right. Yeah, yeah just this, a fad, yeah, a passing the fashion. Generations live there, and it's amazing to see. And it's not only this uh, aspect of building construction. Maybe it's better. Maybe it's durable. Maybe it's not. It's remortgageable, non-remortgageable. You know this practical <laughs> stuff. But it's also my big passion is mental health. Yes, in, yes, yes, because that's something you've picked up on. We, we were mm -hmm. chatting earlier that I think age six or, or something you started to notice these things and that the differences and how you actually physically felt in the different buildings and then you've you've carried that knowledge with you haven't you absolutely mm -hmm. yeah so uh it started uh, my passion for mental health was always there even right. I was preparing for a psychological master's study and i was then i went to business as explained yeah from practical reasons so it was always there uh -huh. but uh when i at the age of six uh i i went to school Mm -hmm. And uh, suddenly I entered the big communist building, mm -hmm. yeah, were made of concrete, big spaces, empty spaces, mm -hmm. and everything was just a little bit bigger than it could be. Right. In, in fact, and very impersonal. Yeah. And after school, I went back to cozy grandparents' eco house. Right. And I, I was truly struggling first year at school when I was Where six. Are you? 
And I, my parents even had to speak to specialists. Why doesn't she go to school? She's great marks, great relationships. It's not like social phobia because I was always outgoing. <laughs> and uh, what is it? And, and I then uh, realized um, it was difficult. Yeah, I somehow got used to it, but that feel, building really made me feel not comfortable. Mm. And I, as a small ch little child, I couldn't process it. Right. And then uh, really I noticed when I went to that eco house, it was like peace you know that smell of wood oh, and uh, just that. just cozy warm yeah. and different uh, your brain starts to work on different frequency yeah and then i i found the answer i didn't learn that yes i'm a person who gets intimidated by design spaces aesthetics of design layout so i just learned to imperse lines from it you know mm -hmm. and learn that i can't get intimidated <laughs> yeah and it went on which uh, after one year we had to change the school for me right. so we did and uh, it went well from then there Just was no like problem change. and I, I always was conscious about that that i have that in my, in me yeah. so i just uh, was protecting myself whenever it was a new building i needed to like work or stay longer i just got okay you know this is what i need to do yeah. and i i don't get any intimidation from the building fantastic and i only learned a complete answer uh, on a business trip in ukraine ah and uh, yeah it was long with as a procurement you know all the negotiations with international parties mm -hmm. yeah tough yeah and we ended up like seven o'clock went for a dinner and it was just one overnight stay and i really wanted to see kiev so yeah they they told us okay you can go we will take you and the owner of the company accidentally was doing a lot of um, uh, guide tours when he was student ah. so he was absolutely passionate about his story and one of his questions was, can you see this big communist building as mm -hmm. we passed a uh, KGB building and this Och. police? Yeah. And I, I was like, yes. And why? What, how does it make you feel? Mm. And I was like, yeah, I remember at school it was quite tough. But yeah, they, they are not nice, basically. And he told me, did you know that it was these uh, buildings were designed by neuroscience uh, to induce fear in people to deliberately absolutely make, wow yes and then i was like yes and i found the answer for this intimidation that some people wow. are more 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 sensible to that and then That's incredible yeah so this was really my experience and then i went i reversed it and and was thinking myself okay when uh they can induce fear can they induce the happiness? Can we do it the other relax? way? Yeah, can we do it the nice and way? And that's how I started, <coughs> yes. Right. You know, I was even more convinced, you know, this eco building, eco stuff, it really works. And yeah. then I also um, had a look at the neuroscience about it. Mm -hmm. And the eco buildings really puts you naturally into a relaxing state, yeah. warm, calm. And it's all science behind it. You know, the neuroscience touches it. Also then Feng Shui, you know, long course, centuries. Yeah. Um, um, this ancient ancient wisdom are yeah. all all coming from it so uh really it's absolutely I, you it's know, a fascinating it's subject absolutely isn't yeah. it? and i still plan uh yeah that's i've already started to prepare some work on it because i i i um, i used to study on various like self-development universities and mm -hmm. some of the uh, topics are the buildings mm -hmm. so I'm going to be engaged more in this with neuroscientists and you're going to follow that door that's another yes. door it's opening for you yeah. it's fantastic yeah, so I would like to study it more yeah and uh, because I'm really passionate about that how yeah. it can it can affect your well-being yeah, exactly we just overlook yeah. it and also I truly love um, Einstein quote and uh, he always says like uh, study nature love nature and uh, it will show you the way <laughs> or nature like simplicity yes yes and i really like that that nature like simplicity yeah because we went so far into mixing concrete into steel making technology to be, and yes, science and, and, and yeah. we just lost that touch yeah. in nature and sometimes solutions are very yeah, that, very that, simple that's very true isn't yeah. it because if i imagine myself in two scenarios a scenario where I'm in the middle of a really, really busy city, a big 
Tokyo place, you know, gigantic buildings, concrete, steel facing in on me, you know, it's quite, quite enclosing, uh, neon signs, you know, noises, traffic, all that busyness. I feel, you know, that the heart's going, the pressure's going, I feel much, much, much higher heart rate, etc. Whereas, take me outside, a little wooden hut in the middle of a Scottish glen, you know, something, a little stream flowing by, dead simple, dead quiet, dead open. Ah, I just, I feel totally different. It's a completely different feeling that you get between those places. Absolutely. And that's why I think we overlook these simple, yeah. simple things, how to feel better. We are looking for specialist health with, uh, you know, especially now it's mental health and so on. Why not to put just small little plant yeah. or a little bit of wooden, wooden, uh, wooden uh, piece of, piece of, table or chair, anything, yeah. you know, what has wood, you know, or even the the soil, you know, there are, it's science, but it doesn't need to be science, it's just simple. Yeah, keep it you simple, know? yeah. In yeah. fact, some of the images, you, you'll be watching this just now, viewers, uh, some of the images of your, your garden offices, etc., they are nice and simple, but they look fantastic. I mean, some of them I just fall in love with. If, if you want to order any of these, make sure you connect with Anna, reach out to her, you know, get in touch with it. There's lots of different designs. But they just look so beautiful and simple and relaxing. And you can actually imagine yourself just working there, you know, out in the bottom of the garden in this nice, simple building, getting on with mm. life. I want to ask you about uh, charity, social housing, etc. Because this is a big topic for you as well. Uh, we've got these, you know, garden offices, etc. that people, you know, can get in touch with you in. But you've got bigger plans. You've got bigger plans. Charity has always been a thing with you and you want to do more with it. You were talking about possibly containers, etc. What, what's your plans for the future with those kind of things? So my big why is uh, really charity. Yeah, in apart from like very normal standard personal reasons, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's really to uh, I, I I came to England because I I knew I needed to do something. So yeah, so it's I always saw the charity. So I started the community charity where I'm still chairman of, mm -hmm. and uh, but I I ended up there again accidentally because I wanted to do <laughs> another accident. Yes, not accidentally, <laughs> but I really wanted to do t a homeless charity. Right, but but in in 2014, it was a lot of regulations, mm. and I always, I also wanted to do child-friendly charity. Right. And that was something which now it's more and more, and I'm grateful for it. Good. But in 2014, it was a challenge. I put about 20 applications if I could volunteer, but it was always some problem. Either I wanted to take also my child for two hours there to show her. And which is now okay for the mm -hmm. charities, uh, but at that time it was not at all. Yeah. So because of old certification, it's still quite rigid, but it's getting more towards help rather than bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. So it's on the good way. Great. And uh, so that's why I, I wanted to do homeless and uh, I ended up in community charity, which is also great. And we are helping the ex expat and also doing some uh, presentations for um, uh, UK, elderly people in uh, care homes. Ah. So it's a lot of activities. Yeah, yeah. you can uh, have a look at my at my profile. Yeah, but it's uh, really where I want to be. It's uh, back to my original plan with homeless. Yeah. So uh, and how I can bridge property and uh, homeless aids. I'm starting to be involved with uh, vulnerable citizens uh, charity right. and uh, there are ongoing projects and uh, they are uh, recyclable container homes and that's uh, what I'm trying to help with Fantastic. and potentially if there are fundings or if we are more successful with the land and so on uh -huh. uh, we would like to do also some wooden buildings right as well yeah. bring it all mm -hmm. together so it's a lot of discussions by yeah. in background uh -huh. uh, but i think it's that's why i think eco it can be very luxurious and mm. posh yes and we want to go yes. to completely passive if we want to be on that scale but eco can be also very simple and yeah. cheap solution just to put some small little like garden office with the uh, with the uh, toilet and the uh, mm. kitchen and use it as a very economical way of living for the homeless people. Tremendous. Yes. So versatile, isn't it? Mm. You're right, you can you can use it in whatever way. We can make it as big and fancy mm -hmm. and flamboyant as you want, or we can just keep it a nice simple shelter mm. made of wood. 
Absolutely. those kind of products. That's fantastic. Yeah. You're tell you you're a clever girl and you've got a, a fascinating future ahead of you. You've got to follow this girl because she's going places and she's doing lots of things. Uh, you've got a, you've got, funnily enough you've got a, a lot of the what I might call the, the ordinary property investor stuff. Oh, I've been a landlord and portfolios. Yeah, yeah, I do. You do flips and bitey flips and so on, etc. On the side as well. But this is where your heart is. This is where your passion is. And you've got all these things that you're bringing together with the mental health, the eco-friendly stuff, the charities. You're bringing it all together. It's, it's an amazing future ahead of you. Absolutely tremendous. And your daughter. Let's finish with that. So, gorgeous little daughter. You always see her in your posts. You take her around the world. You're trying to source all the trees and everything. Uh, what's her name? Is it Sophia? Sophia? How do you pronounce? Yes, Sophia. Sophia. Yeah, Sophia. means wisdom. So I oh, hope. there we go. Mm. She must be having a ball because she's going about with mum. She's seen all these things. She's seen what mum's up to. Do you know what future's ahead for her? Are you going to try and take her into this world as well? I leave. I will leave it to up. Uh, you know, I will leave it up to her. You leave up to her. Yeah, but she <laughs> is passionate about charities. Yeah. So yeah, it's about. I think she will go a yeah, similar direction. Fantastic. Yeah, and also uh, I mentioned to you, I started. That's why I'm so grateful to be a part of the property course. Mm. Yeah, Paul is doing because I've I've gained the knowledge, mm. and then I'm trying to go to more big eco buildings right and that's that's where i would like to Scale be yes yeah. because and now in background uh, we are building the website with the team uh -huh. and uh, yeah and basically i would like to we are actually already have some uh, partner production back mm -hmm. in Europe mm -hmm. and uh, starting offering the modules for passive houses. Ah, because fantastic. as I mentioned to you, when we say eco natural houses, it's always it's big scale. Mm. And everybody, if you even if you do flip and put some uh, infrared lighting, you yeah. can say I have eco eco <laughs> house. Yeah. So it's very uh, that's why people are a little bit confused. Yeah. And uh, so uh, to to position our company basically I started with uh, with uh, classic property knowledge mm -hmm. then bridge which started with small little buildings yeah but um, we are also in background building the business where we would like to go to passive housing mm -hmm. and the yeah, website will be soon hopefully fantastic yeah. there you go you heard it here first big exciting future ahead of this girl so make sure you get connected go into the show notes who can with her follow her journey maybe even buy one of her little posh garden offices for yourself so you can feel better who knows but Anna listen for sacrificing your birthday for coming here today into this week in property and sharing your story thank you very much indeed yeah, it was a pleasure for Great, having thank me. you. Thank you, Richard. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show as much as I did. Remember, with the guests that you just saw, go into the show notes for the page because all of their links are there so that you can get in touch and to get more information. And talking about getting more information, more guests, more insights, more knowledge, etc., make sure you're subscribed. Get the subscription done, get the notifications on, and then we'll always keep in touch with you every single time a brand new show is going to come out. So thanks for tuning to This Week in Property.